Well, kicking things off with you, so happy to have you here this morning. With a market in correction or bear market territory as an investor, what do you do? <laughs> well, Maria, with both of those things already in hand, it's awfully hard to say that you want to trade to get rapidly more defensive at this juncture. That said, with hyperinflation staring us in the face, and of course, the Russian invasion of Ukraine continuing to put dramatic pressure on the global markets, we think a modicum of defense does still make sense. If you have cash coming into your portfolio, there's no rush to put that cash to work. You could dollar cost average it in. Uh, we also think you need to really review your portfolio, make sure your asset allocation, stocks and bonds are in proportion to your long-term goals. Inside of the next three, five, 10 years, what's going on today will matter a lot less, but it's going to matter a lot more inside of the next three to six months, where we think we could in fact see both a recession and hyperinflation. Well, I mean, look at the price of oil right now, Jim, hovering around a 14-year high. As you heard here yesterday, House lawmakers did, in fact, introduce a bill to ban Russian oil imports as Russia warned that it could close a major gas pipeline to Germany, raising the possibility of $300 a barrel oil if the West bans its energy exports. What are your thoughts? You've got company after company walking away from their business in Russia, Shell announcing a withdrawal from Russian oil and gas operations following so many others and now the president is reportedly traveling to Saudi Arabia to get the Saudis to pump more oil what is your assessment of the oil story right now from an investment standpoint it puts dramatic pressure on the broader marketplace and the global marketplace when you look at the world's third largest economy Japan and understand that import it imports virtually all of its oil that's devastating and material in terms of the consequences for its economy in the near term. For our economy, it clearly takes a toll on the driver of our economy, the U.S. consumer. Uh, and the higher it goes, the more that, that bell tolls for consumer spending. If we see a dramatic reversal in consumer spending, we would become uh, significantly more defensive than we currently are because with the jobs market in a healthy state, we think the consumer, at least at the moment, can drive through this wall of inflationary pressure. But it is a real and material danger. And it's not just uh, oil, Maria. It, of course, is commodities and food across the board. So there are some real pressures on the driver of our economy. We're watching it closely. Well, you've got metals surging. You've got food prices surging. Russia, Ukraine, among the t top producers of wheat is another issue. We're going to have it all come out and lay out this Thursday. We'll get the consumer price index out. And we are expecting to see 40-year highs once again uh, with a gain of 7.9% year over year. That would be the largest increase since January of 1982 uh, with the month over month expected up eight-tenths of a percent, Jim. Do you think a recession is possible? Possible given these prices and inflationary threats? We are not ruling out a recession inside of this year. Even ahead of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we weren't ruling out a deflationary bout due to stockpiling. But we definitely think the risk of recession continues to increase and is likely to continue to increase. So this is not a time for uh, long-term investors or even short-term traders to think that they can call a bottom. We think we've got, a, we've got a ways to go before we really find some sort of foundational bottom that we can build upon with confidence. All right, Dagan McDowell is here this morning. Dagan, jump in. Uh, Jim Lowell, do you need to factor in the possibility that the Biden administration makes a mistake, uh, another mistake, even bigger mistake? And I'm not talking about begging Venezuela or even Iran or Saudi Arabia to pump more oil when continuing to turn their backs on U.S. producers. I'm talking about price controls, which would in, would it create a horrific supply shortage because they're going to look to do something to appease the voters and maybe make a mistake. Well, Dagan, I think that is a big risk coming down the pike, the political risk. We know that Washington is focused not so much on the near term or even the long term issues that impact investors. They're focused on the midterms. So uh, yet another mistake absolutely would not rule that out. Uh, the whole uh, pitch of energy independence based as it is upon an ideology more than the facts on the ground is going to have to be sorted out 
sorted through. Perhaps the midterm elections can help along that score. But between now and then, I would expect uh, politics to add just another layer of volatility to this marketplace. Sure. And, and it has and it is. Jim, it's great to catch up with you. Thanks so much for being here this morning. We so appreciate it. Jim Lowell joining us thanks. this morning. Uh, and we'll see you soon, Jim. Thanks. We're just getting started. Coming up, Russia and Ukraine.